and which billionaire endorsement influences voters the most or at all. Our next guest is the incoming chair of the Nebraska Democratic Party, a state Hillary is fighting for, Jane Cleave, joining us live in Omaha, Nebraska, in a Fox Business exclusive. Jane, welcome to the show. Uh, look, Nebraska has more millionaires per capita thanks to early Buffett investors in just about any other state. However, it's also an agricultural state, blue collar, you could argue. How much does Buffett's bump matter here? You know, Buffett is seen as a hero, not only in Nebraska, but I think nationwide, and not only for Democrats, but for moderate Republicans and conservative Republicans as well. They've seen him invest in clean energy, which has obviously given a boost to solar and wind as well. So it means a lot that he's going to be introducing Secretary Clinton today. You know, he, he doesn't get liked by a lot of people who feel that his tax ideas, which are, look, make the wealthy pay more, uh, tend to be negative for businesses. But let me just get to this. Nebraska's an interesting state. It has gone red year after year after year. Dems have not campaigned in the state during the general election since FDR. That's a long time. What can Hillary get from this beyond one electoral vote? Because in, in Nebraska, if I'm correct, the electoral, the electoral votes pretty much go per community, right? Per different uh, areas. Congressional yeah, district. so we're very, there's only two states in the nation that do the splitting of electoral votes. That's Nebraska and Maine. So President Obama got the Omaha district, which is a very progressive district. It's actually kind of split 50-50 between Dems and Republicans when you figure out where the independents are leaning. So Secretary Clinton's going for that. But I also think it's really important to look at Nebraska. We stopped the Keystone XL pipeline. We raised a minimum wage. We abolished the death penalty. We gave the Dreamers license all within the last two years. And so while we look very red on the surface, there's a very independent and populist streak throughout the state. Let me point out, too, that with all of those things you articulated, you do have a Republican governor. We, we have him on all the time. He's, he's really um, one of our favorites. But, you know, <laughs> your, your unemployment rate, with all that you've articulated, is much lower than the national average. It's 3%. So, uh, in Nebraska's an interesting state because you can prove that certain left-leaning ideas with Pete Ricketts' ideas, which are to not, not do such property taxes that are onerous, etc., really tend to work. So when you hear that Bud Singhorst, Sing, Singhorst rather, who's the executive director of Nebraska's Republican Party, says Hillary Clinton is, quote, wasting her time and money in Nebraska, mm -hmm. what say you? Well, I mean, let's just be on, honest, right? Secretary Clinton would not be coming here if they didn't think that they could get that electoral vote. And any states that the presidential nominees go after right after the convention are the most critical swing states and very important states to them. And so I think that the Republican Party is actually quite comfortable in their role, and they're facing a huge scandal right now that's rocking the Republican Party in our state. One of their senators has had cyber sex on a state-issued laptop. Governor Ricketts is involved in the scandal and the cover-up of it. So they're facing a lot of problems. Problems, and we are just happy going after that little blue dot on the prairie. A uh, little blue dot on the prairie. Okay, yeah, the Willa Cather <laughs> area. Um, but I, I have to ask That's because, right. let, let me go back to Keystone. You were known as the Keystone Killer because you really led the fight against making sure that Keystone Pipeline did not get approved. Hillary Clinton has been accused of flip-flopping her position on Keystone. What do you say to people who said, why not let it work? Because, you know, you had the previous governor um, coming out and saying initially, and he was a Republican too, we don't like mm -hmm. the Keystone because it could hurt the water table. And then once they rerouted it, it, that was satisfactory to him. And those were jobs that, that could have been created. Well, Heinemann's actually the only one that flip-flopped. He was the previous governor, and he said that he was against the Keystone Pipeline if it crossed the Sand Hills. Even when they rerouted it, the pipeline still crossed the Sand Hills. And a lot of us in Nebraska were against the pipeline for three reasons. The Sand Hills and the water, which you already mentioned. But first and foremost, we didn't like that a foreign corporation from Canada could come and take American land through eminent domain for a pipeline that did not carry Nebraska oil, and we were not getting oil off the pipeline. So it was Canada's essentially Canada's our great friend, pipeline. though, Jane, don't you think? I mean, they're they our sure neighbor are. to the they north. There are. But when you talk about this, it essentially starts to open up this very risky door that any foreign corporation can come into America and tell any landowner, you may not want this pipeline. Could be Russia, could be China, could be anybody. Okay. You don't want this pipeline, it's not going to serve you, but we're still going to take your land through eminent domain. That did not sit well with farmers and ranchers. Well, we're watching this closely and we shall see your quick prediction, yes or no, she gets that one electoral vote? She gets it, and Representative Ashford in that district also gets reelected. We shall see. Jane Cleave, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very <laughs> Thanks, much. Guys. Jane's with the Nebraska Democratic Party, and she's the incoming chair.